time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury, and Mr. Carl Hess, press editor of Newsweek magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Stiles Bridges, United States Senator from New Hampshire. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speaker. Senator Bridges, I'm sure that our viewers will be glad to see you back on the chronoscope again tonight, sir. And as Republican leader in the United States Senate, why, uh, we'll welcome your views on some of the current developments. Now, sir, uh, Senator Taft has uh, had a rather important meeting with General Eisenhower. I'm sure that you were interested in that. And uh, I'd like you to tell our viewers just uh, what you think uh, was the result of that meeting between uh, General Eisenhower and Senator Taft. I think it brought together uh, two of the great factions of the Republican Party and uh, I think that uh, there was a general agreement as a result of the conference. I think that it means that Taft will support wholeheartedly the Eisenhower candidacy, and I think that the differences which uh, they may have had before as a result of their conferences have been so resolved that the area of difference is between the two is slight, and the Taft can do it with a clear conscience and wholeheartedly. Well, do you think this will mean any change in the tenor of the campaign? I think, if anything, it will have a tendency, uh, Mr. Taft, to step up the campaign. Well, will Taft, for instance, speak more specifically? I think Taft will pinpoint the issues uh, that he's uh, particularly concerned with and uh, intends to uh, put on a very vigorous type of campaign. Of course, as a uh, Republican leader in the Senate, I know that you yourself have been uh, very interested in uh, uniting the party. Now, do you foresee, sir, that uh, by November the 4th, you think that you will have a united Republican Party? I do, yes, I do, very definitely. You don't think that any of the uh, so-called extreme right factions will hold back uh, from supporting General Eisenhower? No, I think that the issues will be so cl uh, clarified that, uh, that uh, the right and conservative wing of the Republican Party as perhaps exemplified by the Taft uh, faction of the Taft leadership. Uh, well, there'll be such a difference between me and the left-wing tendencies of the Democratic uh, campaign that uh, they'll have no difficulty in making that choice. The other uh, extremely interesting development now uh, has been, of course, the smashing victory of Senator McCarthy uh, in Wisconsin. Now, uh, will you tell our viewers uh, how you interpret uh, the meaning of that uh, uh, surprise? I think that uh, Senator McCarthy's victory in Wisconsin by such a tremendous mar uh, margin indicates that the people of Wisconsin certainly endorse wholeheartedly the objectives which he sought, which is to rid the government agencies of this country of subversive elements. Were you surprised, sir, at the result? I was surprised at the magnitude, the size of it. I was not surprised at the victory. Were you pleasantly surprised? I was pleasantly surprised. Do you feel then that McCarthy's support for anyone during the campaign will be valuable? I do. I think that it will because I think people, to most people in the country, McCarthy, whether they agree with all of his methods or all that he said, uh, they agree that uh, McCarthy is sort of a symbol of action, and people want action in eliminating the bad influences, the subversives from the government of the United well, now States. Now, specifically, of course, sir, you're interested in electing Republicans to the United States Senate. Now, uh, do you think that McCarthy can be useful outside Wisconsin in the election of Republicans to the Senate? Yes, I think he'd be an asset in any state in the Union well, where we have a Republican candidate. Is there any place where he isn't welcome? I think the only state that I've heard of, and particularly, was a statement coming out of Connecticut recently, where one of the candidates for the Senate in that state indicated that uh, 
He didn't intend to make use of Senator McCarthy. You regard that as a tactical error on the part of the Republicans in Connecticut? Uh, I do, yes. Would it be a similar tactical error for Eisenhower to continue to ignore him? Well, I think Eisenhower, as our candidate, uh, must recognize uh, <coughs> the McCarthy victory there and uh, its significance and its magnitude. Is there any reason to believe he will? I rather think that he will, yes. Well, Senator, now our viewers, a number of them, I'm sure, know that you yourself have been making a number of uh, trips out into the country and uh, that you are supporting the ticket actively. Now, uh, what uh, interesting observations do you have for us from those trips that you've been making? Well, I uh, come away uh, with a definite feeling, and I'm just en route back now from rather a lengthy trip, uh, that uh, the campaign, the Republican campaign, is picking up gathering momentum and uh, if it uh, the recent uh, tendency to pick up to gather momentum carries forward as I have every reason to believe that it will uh, I think it's a good old man is there a difference between the things that the people you have spoken to are interested in and the things Eisenhower has stressed in his campaign well I mean I find that particularly people uh, are interested in certain uh, definite issues. What but issues do you find? I think, uh, for instance, they're very interested in Korea and uh, our action and our attitude in Korea. They're very interested in taxes. They're very interested in ridding the delicate agencies of the government from all the communist uh, influences. Well, you spoke so about their being interested in, in, in taxes, sir. Uh, do you think that's one of the major issues? Yes, I do. I believe that. Uh, it is uh, an issue that is felt by uh, some 55 well, uh, million taxpayers. Now, I wonder if that's typical. You, of course, are, are a Yankee and a New Englander. Uh, is everybody in the country as worried about money as you people are? Well, I'll tell you, up in New England, we are interested in money. Uh, we like to see the American dollar worth a dollar, and we're getting worried. I was over in Canada the other day and uh, purchased an item for $8. I gave the st shopkeeper eight dollars, and he said, 32 more cents, buddy. Your dollar isn't worth as much as it used to be. Well, that was a shock to me. Why? Because I was brought up in the New England state along the Canadian border, and all from the time of my childhood on, the Canadian dollar sold at a discount of 10 to 15 cents from the American dollar. Now to find that uh, the American dollar is selling at a discount, not the Canadian dollar. It's a terrific shock to me. Well, Senator, now, uh, you, you, I believe you've been in the Senate uh, since something like 1936. That's you? right. You're number one in the Republican I Senate. am, yes, sir. Meaning you've been there longer than any mm -hmm. other Republican. Uh, and you're still a relatively young man, I believe. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> sir, uh, do you think there's much of a chance now, or a great chance, of a Republican Senate and a Republican House? I think if we have any trend in this election, which I believe we have, that we have a, a, an excellent chance to capture both the Senate and the House. Well, the Senate will be by a small margin, well, but we can capture it. Will these campaigns in the Senate and the House be pitched differently from the national campaign as far as... Well, you're I mean, the overall will be the same, but uh, the individual candidates in the respective states will emphasize uh, particular and specific issues. Now coming back to yourself, sir, uh, do you regard yourself as a conservative in the United States Senate now? Well, when I came to the Senate uh, from the governorship of New Hampshire up there, I was regarded as sort of a rank progressive. And I suppose most people today regard me as sort of a conservative, although well, my views haven't changed. Does that mean that you are opposed to the so-called social No, gain? and if there's anything that makes me sick and tired is to have uh, Democrats and New Dealers all around this country telling if the Republicans get in, they'll turn back the pages of uh, to the dark ages. That's pure, undiluted bunk. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the Republicans generally approve the sound social gain. Is there anything in your own record that indicates that? Uh, yes. When I was governor of New Hampshire, uh, my state, the little state of New Hampshire, was the first state in the United States to qualify under the Federal Social Security Act. We put through the first, uh, the second unemployment insurance law in the country. We put through Mother's Aid, which was an initial step in the country, and we set up the first cancer research uh, commission and uh, clinics 
in the country. Well, how would the Republican achievement of these social gains, so-called social gains legislations, differ from the Democratic? Well, I think that uh, uh, that's a good point. I think the, the Republicans would like to see not everything centered in the federal government. We'd like to see the, it a, a cooperative venture with as much emphasis put in the states and local control and local operation as possible. The, s the federal government only coming in to coordinate or playing as small a part as possible. As a Republican leader, leader of the Republicans in the Senate, you don't know of any uh, tendency or any desire on the part of the Republicans uh, to repeal any of the major uh, I social do not. legislation. Or to change any of it? Oh, I think there may be some uh, changes uh, that would be sound and in the right direction, but uh, I don't know of any to repeal any of the uh, sound uh, social legislation. The changes would be towards state control, uh, uh, individual uh, yes. state control. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator, as a final question, sir, since you are particularly interested in the Senate races, I'm sure that our viewers would like for you to tell us the states in which you think the Republicans have the best chance to gain seats in the Senate this year. I think we have an excellent chance to gain two seats in Connecticut, uh, a seat in, in uh, Maryland, a seat in Michigan, a seat in Wyoming, a seat in New Mexico, a seat in West Virginia, and a seat in Kentucky. And there may be some others. In uh, Arizona, uh, we have a, a good fighting chance in Arizona. And, and it's your belief that there is an excellent chance then for... Yes, I can see that where we could capture the Senate by a two, three, or four vote margin. Well, sir, I'm certain that our viewers have very much appreciated these views from you tonight, sir, and thank you for being with us. The editorial board for this edition of the Lawn Gene Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Carl Hepp. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Stiles Bridges, United States Senator from New Hampshire. Longine watches appeal to particular people, men and women of distinction, who look for faultless appearance and performance in a watch, as well as in other things that they buy. Now, does solid worth also appeal to you? For excellence and for elegance, Longine is the only watch in history to win 10 World Fair Grand Prizes, 28 Gold Medal Awards. For accuracy, Longine watches have won countless honors from the world's great government observatories. In a Longine watch, discriminating men and women find faultless finish and performance. And remember, if you pay $71.50 or more for a watch, you're paying the price of a Longine. And you should insist on getting a Longine. For throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longine. The world's most honored watch. Premier product of the Lawn Jane Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Lawn Jane Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour. Broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. Join the Battle of the Ages on the CBS Television Network.